Hey, fans, Cabanas are back again for the 2023 OCSC season. Don't miss out on all the fun. Maybe there's some fun to be had here for McNulty. McNulty touches off Oloski! Milan Oloski! No one shot the ball more than him in the league this year. Now he's hit pay dirt. one nothing. five minutes in. Talked about a big ball over the top. Herrera does a good job. He's patient. He looks to take on the defender. Milan Oloski, the player to watch, steps up right in the middle of the field. No doubt about it. Nothing the goalkeeper could do here. Takes a little bit of deflection off the defender. But we talked about this earlier. Strong in their block. Long ball over the top. Herrera is patient on the ball. He takes on his defender, waits for his runners to come. And here Do you look at a guy sometimes and go, really? Tricks and flicks now? We've been running all day. That's a wonderful step through by Wagner to set up Moar. Back for Wagner if he can get there. Sargis, Wagner still all the way across. Moreno! Amando Moreno the finish on the feed from Weehan. And New Mexico has finally broken through on the road. Here we're talking about New Mexico. New Mexico has done a good job with their press. A little bit of a mistouch there. Moar on the run makes a solid overlapping run. I thought the ball was going to turn over here, but Wagoneer does a good job of sticking with it. Plays the ball hard across the box. He's looking for numbers. He finds his man. Moreno does a good job of finding the right spot. That's well done by Wagoneer, just putting a dangerous ball across the box. He picks his head up, finds a yellow shirt. Moreno does a good job of being at the right spade at the right time. Goalkeeper runs out, patient, calm, composed. And then New Mexico on the counter. Cheek on an island. Wagoneer making the run. Now slipping through Weehan. Chris Weehan! He's back! And same as it ever was, Chris Weehan puts New Mexico two goals ahead on the road. Transitional goal from New Mexico. They do a good job dealing with that wave of pressure. What we see here, he picks his eyes up and he, they have all day to run. But I love here is a run from Wagner. He draws the defender across. There's only two defenders back. One has to step to the ball. The run across, run behind, opens it up for everybody else. Great finish, picks his head up, has nothing but daylight in front of him. Calm, cool, collected. This is picked up and pushed through by Rivas. It's Moreno from a difficult angle. Follow up hammered in, Sergio Rivas. And New Mexico is three goals ahead on the road now. Rivas getting the opportunity before the game. He makes the most of it. He starts this play with a good ball wide. It's a big save here by the goalkeeper. He'd want a little bit of help from his defense. But Rivas continues his run, gets the ball wide. Moreno plays a hard ball across the box. Goal goalkeeper makes a good save, but Rivas continues his run. Picks it. Williamson has one goal this year. They know when he gets hot, he could really become a, a scorching attacking option for Loudon. Tampakis bouncing on his toes. Luis Arroyo blows the whistle. Can Williamson pull one back? Yes, he can. Three and a half minutes before stoppage time and Loudon off the schneid. He called what he called. Good hard run up by Williamson. He sends the goalkeeper the other way by taking those hard first steps. You think he's going to drive it hard across his body and at the last. Fernando striding down. He wants a fifth to his name this season. Good ball into the box. Katea Duke. Shot deflected off the bar and put into the back of the net. And Memphis 9-1 have the lead and it is Pickering who gets the goal his second goal of the season breaks the deadlock 54 minutes gone it's FC Tulsa nil Memphis 901 FC one right at the away side great piece of skill Fernando playing a dangerous ball in trying to find that perfect pass gets a bit of help off of the deflection and then great awareness to follow up there from Pickering and Nelson Yes, you do. Pickering trying to open it up. Here's Malloy, could hit one, still could hit one. And Malloy threw a load of players and into the goal. 
and the Irishman gets the second goal through a crowd of players. 65 minutes gone, FC Tulsa nil, Memphis 901 FC 2. A bit of a deflection to throw off Nelson, but it's just enough for Memphis 901 FC to find their second goal here of this second half, making it that much harder for FC Tulsa to get back into this game. Yeah, it came off the heel of Bradley Bouchois. Aaron Malloy won't care, it's his first of the season for the captain. It's a lot of space to run into. He has his defense organized. Costa then with the responsibility. Flips it over the top of the wall and in comes Epps and a tap in for Darius Suarez. It is a goal. It is a fight back from FC Tulsa. With eight minutes left, Darius Suarez, the substitute, scores the goal. It's game on. It's FC Tulsa 1, Memphis 901 FC 2. The substitute in the second half is the difference maker. Excellent delivery from DaCosta and Epps. Does a great job on that back post to play that ball back across. Hamid with the initial save, but... Some of the keys to the game brought to you uh, by Gil Danny, leader in high quality, comfortable apparel basics located right here in the Low Country. Barajas taps it through, Rodriguez sneaks it in. Quite the start for Charleston Battery. And it's 1-0 in the eighth minute. Just don't have enough time, but this time the right combination. Barajas, left footed pass and left footed finish for Rodriguez as well inside the box. The rotation works again as Rodriguez moves ahead Barajas and finishes in front of goal. Can go to the benches. Loudon turn it over and they're in Hartford's attacking third. Open up for Edwards. Keeper comes out. Ball in front of goal. Hartford on the board first. Juan Pablo Torres, and Hartford goes in front in the 23rd minute. You an unforced error, Prince Sadie plays it around, Kyle Openo puts it into a dangerous position for Kyle Edwards, first time, puts it on the six yard box. Juan Pablo Torres into the back of the net. That Goal, Elvis Amo on the penalty kick. 2-0 Athletic. Going right down the middle. You look foolish if you miss. Let's Faroe jump out of the way. Martinez carves out some space as Guenzotti to his left. Quinn applying support. Martinez plays it across. Guenzotti a couple of touches. The lead for what a hit! Oh, what a goal! Ramon gets his second goal of the season. Appears he got hurt in the process. It might mute the celebration. They will still cue the smoke anyway. Let's we'll have to make an immediate substitution. Let's take one more look from the field level. Well, incredible vision by Guenzotti to get this touch and then see that Rebion is coming off of his right side, lay it into space for him, and Brian comes up and just perfectly utilizes the defenders as a screen. With what he does also as being a leader for that team in the back four. Blackstock for Pittsburgh. He gets to the byline. Crossing it into the middle, it's pumped towards Kizza, and Edward Kizza scores. Well, Leo Diaz might want that one back for Vegas, but it's Eddie on the spot for the Riverhounds. Edward Kizza gives them the lead, and the Riverhounds are off and running at Highmark. Unbelievable, taken aggressive by Blackstock to get that cross in. You're not gonna score goals if you don't get the chances. And he Failing, just about controlled it. Works for space, has support with Canardo Forbes. Failing. Good ball into the back post, and it's a thumping header. Edward Kizza scores again. Hadn't scored in the league all season, but Edward Kizza has a brace just past the half an hour mark here in Pittsburgh. He doesn't smash it in where he takes a touch. He lays it off perfect so he can hit it one time. All the runs in the box are on time, and that's what you want. You want one forward going near post. You want one ending up on the penalty spot. That's exactly what you're going to get. And unfortunately for Vegas now, it's 2 nothing, and it's going to be tough for them to come back now. And then Dinko had plenty of time to create a chance. Yeah, it looks like they're just expecting the other person to do what maybe they should be doing. 
Ball in from Forbes, it's headed in, it's a goal! It's a thumping header from Arturo Ordonez. Pittsburgh roaring here at Highmark. They lead by three goals to nil. Big, getting, getting the power behind the header, and it's a great header. I mean, I don't think you can ask for an easier finish, but it's a great run, great reaction to the ball. Like we were saying all game, Vegas just aren't finding those 50-50 balls that Pittsburgh are, and it's Pittsburgh are on the attack again. Griffin, Kizza, who's on, I beg your pardon, Forbes. Forbes, deflects through for Griffin! Who smashes it in? Flag stays down. Danny Griffin is on the score sheet again for Pittsburgh. In the league this time, the man who won it in New England for the Riverhounds in the Open Cup scores his first league goal in his return to the Riverhounds. We've been saying all the balls, all the bounces have been going Pittsburgh's way. Unfortunate right there, maybe in an offsides position, but you're going to give him that chance. He's going to finish it. And now it's 4 0 Pittsburgh getting their subs in, getting ready for Wednesday's game against Columbus. It's 4 0, but he's still focused and ready for anything that's coming out of him. The substitute, Issa Ryan, gets that shot on target. Carlton with the corner. Volley deflected and in. Goal. Vegas do get on the board with four and a half minutes left. Frustrating for Pittsburgh, but if you're Vegas, that's what you want to see. One of those goals go in. Doesn't matter how it goes in. You've broke the barrier and now you got your goal. Hopefully they can build off that maybe. Games into the season for Miami. How would you evaluate them from start to where they're at now? I think as of late you've seen. This one fluttering in and no chance for Vegas who elevates on it. An excuse me goal for Miami FC and they lead one nothing. It's all about the movement from Kyle Murphy because Grant Stoneman understands I need to make a play on this. If I don't, Kyle Murphy's in on goal, but just so unlucky for the center back up and over. San Diego, they've scored in seven straight matches coming into tonight's affair. 11 goals during that seven game stretch. This attempt here, McGuire with the first denial, but it's cleaned up easily by Evan Conway and we're level at 1-1. And it's going to be a frustrating goal for Anthony Peel is to concede. It comes off a throw in. Roger Martin makes this thing happen. The ability to test the shape interiorly. The run from Guido playing off the shoulder and then first to react. Is Evan Conway, a fox in the box. You see Mark Segbers. Giveaway here. There's Moon. Moon, he goes down just outside the 18. Duwuna brought him down, but not a lot of harm. Not a lot of contact. Watch out here for Murphy. Murphy against Adams, who tracks it back nicely. Murphy, Trent Dancy shoots and he scores! Kyle Murphy lets that thing rip in the 61st minute. One on two, it don't matter. Miami back on the board, they lead 2-1. DeWuna does extremely well to close down the space. It's a no foul. And then it's Chapman Page. We talked about him in the open. The ability to step into that middle third and kickstart the attack. Kyle Murphy talked about him in the open as well. Confident. Knows exactly what he's doing, going to do. Sets up Kyle Adams, close to step off and close down the space. And when you give a confident striker the ability to create his own space, 18, 17 yards out, he's never going to miss. Opens up his hips and calmly slots it in. What a terrific goal. You can hear some of the chatter right now is the physicality with some of the fresh players on the pitch. This one played through with Conway. Watch out. Conway, this is going to result in an own goal. Well, you give it and you take it. Paco Craig, an own goal in the second time that's happened this year. And we're tied at 2-2. Paco and Chapman Page is just not there. And then you put the ball in a dangerous situation. Good things happen for Evan Conway. He's been at the thick of everything for the loyal Paco Craig. Corner here. Craig doing a good job of elevating. Oh, watch out, this is trouble, and it finds Twine. Broken play, and all of a sudden, Elliot Coyer, as you mentioned, came off the sidelines for Nate Miller. San Diego on the board for the third time here tonight, and their first advantage in the 85th minute, and it's 3-2. With the first initial ball, but then it's a second phase. That's a bit confusing and frustrating once again for Miami FC. 
As this ball rotates back around, it's a missed kick from Bodily. Nelly Collier does extremely well to get his hips around it, just ropes this thing into that far post. There's too much traffic in front of Jake McGuire. He can't see it. There's that switch. It's on. They haven't hit it, but it certainly is on if they can get it over Borelli's uh, in behind Borelli. Roof does find Kasim, who's off and moving. Kasim cuts it inside. Martinez. Martinez threats through Kasim. One more cutback. Agadello! Well worked from beginning to end. One Agatello, the finishing touch. Birmingham on the board first. See, here's Prosper cutting inside. Finds Enzo, slips him in, plays it across. Boom, misses Patcher. Say no more. Too much time, too much space for someone like Juan Agatello, who would hope that they wouldn't look too far forward. Getting that goal tonight allows them not only to rebuild their confidence in the league, hopefully get three points if they can maintain this. But here come El Paso. Roof caught in possession. Zacharias pushing forward. Still Zacharias, his shot redirects. Solignac off a deflection, puts it in. Birmingham's lead doesn't last long. Luis Solignac scores, and it's 1-1. Sixth time. And a little stroke of luck for El Paso. Uh, it gives away a throw in, but uh, you know, great defending from Cornali and recovery there. Actually, Lopez in intervention that time. Birmingham can't play out of the back. Rose scores! We just talked about in pregame, El Paso taking advantage of big mistakes in the game. That pass is gonna be looked at as ill-advised from, from Prosper Seam. Goes straight to an El Paso player. Uh, the throw in, and then all of a sudden, you know, they don't clear the danger. A poor pass out of the back. Rose walks straight onto it. Easy as you like. Thank you much. To send a special shout out to NBA champion and former Detroit Piston bad boy Rick Mahorn taking in the broadcast tonight. Here comes City, an opportunity, and it's in the back of the net. Skaga Simonson from outside the 18, and lightning strikes here at Keyword. That's the finish the city faithful have been waiting for. And John, this is exactly what the doctor ordered. And this play started innocently enough, but Steinwasher sending it up. Here's some booing a moment ago when they first realized it was going to be a penalty awarded to the visiting team. And here's Dennis. It's a goal. Goal for Tampa Bay. High under the bar as Derek dived to his right side and the Rowdies are in front, one to nothing. Phenomenal penalty kick there. You couldn't have placed that much better. It's a spare here. Look at this phenomenal kick. Tucks that in right under the crossbar. Here's Doherty racing up the pitch. Sends it ahead to Spalding who's unmarked. Balling into the air, sends it into Dennis, a shot, and it's a goal! Tampa Bay in front now by two. Just methodical, methodical attack there for Tampa Bay. They had been challenging, they have been working, and as we said, you put something in the box, and bouncing balls in the box find a way of reaching their goal. That is a really good angle. In fact, I believe Tyler Derrick is slightly shielded on this. He doesn't see the attack until it's already right on top of him. Cabretta, Coach Cabretta, um, I'm sure you can see the concern on his face. As Jennings able to work his way around, moves in on Derek and he scores! Gets it into the short side and Cal Jennings, a second half sub, has put Tampa Bay up by three. Well, the offense has just been pouring in for the Rowdies. They got rowdy here in the second half. Still the last uh, few minutes here. It was a well-placed goal there by Jennings, who's able to fight his way around the marker, move in on Derek. Crutzen, who we talked about for Phoenix Rising against Hartford, just played what great run. In over the top, first touch to settle. Kept alive, Arteaga, tight angle, Arteaga scores! Phoenix find the answer in the 67th minute. And their own faithful roar for Arteaga. Great run 
off the shoulder of Nakam. And as this ball pops up, look how he plays the body of Nakam, just bodies him off. Says goodbye, see you later. Closes down the angle. No problem through the wickets of Shuttler. What a terrific goal this is for Arteaga. The composure, the strength, the skill. He's flying as is Herrera. Herrera running into some space, trying to get around Barbier. It's in for Keko, and Barbier is just able to escape there. But Sacramento not done yet. Kerr over the top, looking for Keko. Is he onside? He is. Inside the bar, Keko with a left footed strike. Oh, it's brilliant from number seven, number two on the year. And the Republic have their first goal in the 12th minute. And just manages to put it right in off that far post. And we spoke about how good Blanchett is. There's no chance he's saving that. And you thought the opportunity had gone for the Republic. Jack Gurr keeps it alive, recycles his Ron Keiko, and what a finish that is. Mark Briggs talked about how he wanted more goals from. Keiko in the space. It's a foot race with Matsoso. Cicerone cutting in between. Look at the left side here. Has room, numbers, Republic. 4-3, moving for Cicerone. Cicerone's gonna take it himself! Oh, yes! Russell Cicerone surveyed the field, looked for a teammate, went for it himself, and it's number eight on the year. Eight of the season. And this all happens, Keko initially putting the pressure on, but it's the support Cicerone has. He has runners off of him, the defenders step off, they don't know what to do, and blasts it right in the top corner. No yeah. chance, Blanchett. Everyone was worried about the other man, and they did pick up number 11, and he just puts a knuckler in the back of the net. Tower Bridge Battalion. He was the man who scored in the only Republic victory against the Ritz. It was Connor Donovan. Herrera, is he onside? Flag stays down. Herrera! Sebastian Herrera, number two on the year. But it's number three tonight, and Sacramento Republic have their biggest advantage against the Roots all time. So, I mean, he's rolled the defender, and Hackshaw just cannot recover. Cool, calm, collected, slots it in, 3 0. Broke three lines to get there, and Sebastian Herrera, a tireless workhorse, continues to. Cross comes in, it's cleared by Sacramento. Opportunity in Oakland has gotten one back here. A service from the right side and Sacramento caught a bit sleeping there and it's three to one. Oakland Roots find themselves back in the game. It was Memo Diaz crossing it in and at the back post, just unmarked. It was Barbier with a left foot, slots it past Danny Vitiello, and, and game's back on. Once again, that, that comes.